I just want you the first photograph we're going to look at. Big masses of light and dark. So the photograph here has been posterized into three values. So let's just cut it across here on the horizon, sort of on the road line. The first value will be the color of the paper, the value of the paper. The second will be this value, the sunlit trees. And the third will be the shadows around those trees. Now, everything below that is in shadow, so we're going to do it sort of in reverse. All this will be value 3, the road will be value 2, and where the sunlight is hitting the road will be value 1. So I'm going to show you that now when I draw it. The sky, value 1, is the color of the paper. The second value, the, the sunlit trees, is this one and I'm pointing it all the way through all those trees and you'll notice how simple I make the left hand side of this tree even if I were painting it I would not get into those sort of tall scrawny angled branches with the long sky holes I would just simplify it like this so you see there's the third value for the shadows so we have value one the road value three for the dark grasses. You can see I've left the paper color there for the sunlit road. So those are th the three values now um, on the lower half. And I'm differentiating because these are bushes in the foreground. So I sort of cheated a little bit and I put some value in there for the sky because look at how deep blue that sky is. But the buildings and the shadows on the road are value two. And the buildings in the sunlight are value one. And the big masses of the cypress here is value 3, the shadow side of the bushes on each side of the, uh, there you can see the shadow, the value 3 in those bushes, in and around the doors and at the church at the end, the eaves that I just drew in is value 3, the wall value 2, and then this value here, again value 2 as it sort of comes in there creating the shadow and then value three for the windows and the doors and then the big shadow shape in the foreground is value two so it's simplifying right down to give that three value sense of that whole scene and there is a plein air painting i did from life of that very spot let's look at the hole back over there on the right and down along the bottom and there's the still life in three main value masses you can learn a lot about what you anticipate you're going to paint. I want you to notice how really I'm just painting the shapes. Now this is a dark green, it's not, it's a phthalo green, alizarin, chrome oxide green, probably a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue, but it's, it's still a green. And there's just the shapes, there's a hit of dark there just to distinguish between those two together those two cypresses together and then you can see how much lighter this shadowed side is but again it's just a shape the dark side of this particular shape same thing there it's lighter a little warmer perhaps than the uh, cypress greens behind it but the shadow shape and so I'm mainly filling in all the shadows here's the very simple tree shapes in behind I didn't get into all little branches and leaves and so on like that. I just wanted simple shapes back there that aren't going to attract too much attention. And then the sky was just really one color. It's, it's all sort of up quite high, so I'm not even bothering to gradate it particularly. But just the shapes, right? And then here I'm just putting in a few, just a couple of sky holes to kind of say, oh, I see, that's a tree back there. And uh, then the shadow side, um, you know, on the pavement here is quite a bit bluer than it, than the uh, than this whatever this is. The wall is warmer and lighter, so I'm putting all of those in. You'll see I have to adjust this color later to get it a little darker to get it to work the way I want. But that whole family is sort of coming in as a bunch of uh, warmer grays, and then the big mass of this hedge over. And you see, there's all kinds of light and little flowers and all kinds of things. God. For me, this whole thing is in shadow with one, you'll see one little strip of sunlight coming down through the middle of it. So this is the other half, all big shadow mass. I do not get into all the little flicky marks there because well, I just don't think it's worth it, really. I mean, it, it has, the, the painting has more strength by just painting these big 
simple shapes and let that do the work. Um, then there's a real dark down under the bottom where the light isn't getting in underneath the shed, underneath the big hedge. And then you'll see that this color is the dirt color and it's warmer, it's still very cool, uh, and it's dark, but it's a warmer color than say the hedge beside it. There's a shadow side lighter than the big hedge, the shadow side of that bush. And then a little line of shadow just to kind of distinguish the fact that it curls underneath there. And then now I'm going to start painting some of this sunlight in here. It's not really bright. I want to have the brightest colors down further. See right like here, that I want to start grabbing our attention, not further up the hedge, closer to, to us. Now I have to adjust, you'll see the shape there. I've brought it over, angled it over too far, and it looks kind of awkward, and I adjust that. Um, but there you see, I, I scraped that paint away and just cleaned that edge up so it was a little bit more vertical. But that, I want you to look at, right? Now I've put sort of some sunlit aspects, just shapes though, right? Just thin little shapes on the sh lit side of the cypress. So then again, we want that good hit of sunlight hitting that hedge in back there. And then you see here I'm darkening the, uh, the wall so I can really get a good strong sense of sunlight hitting that wall and then it's a little wide so I do a dark mark just to sort of make it really uh, crisp. Get a few hits of sunlight on the, on the wall up front. Just a couple of marks of sunlit bush, light, different green than the others, cooler, but still sunlit. And okay, there's the sunlit bush, and there's the sunlit side of that bush. And then, then I'm getting the shadow of that one in. And then I think now I put the sunlight in, and there we get that shape, right? And then I put two darks in there just to sort of establish the cypress, sort of get it pop a little bit. It doesn't really need it. We know it's there. And then again, another sunlit bush, the big second big uh, hedge back there just needs to sort of be clarified and cleaned up a little bit. And that's the, the top side of the closer hedge. We can just sort of see the light. You know, it's not getting sunlit. It's still in shadow. And then I sort of put the shadow side of that shape back there and then a, a real shape for the lit side. And then I adjust it a bit. And there's just adjusting that hedge a little bit so it's not quite such a strong edge. Just run a little bit of something up there just to kind of break up that big form couple of darks in there just to kind of define the, the two hedges, one in front of the other. And uh, messing around there a little bit with some edges. And then that head, that cypress was kind of a wacky shape. And there's pretty much the finished painting. And you can still see very much the structure that originally caught my attention. Yes, the lighting need to be adjusted and it need to sort of have better definition of forms and draw. Windmills and telephone lines in front of the dark shadows. And what I'm looking at primarily is the lit side, the dark side of these shapes of how the sun is hitting this in the late afternoon and the shadow and light shapes. And you'll notice in the painting, I've stripped everything away to focus on that one thing. And I have created sort of a focus back here and a patch of light across there to kind of bring our attention to back to the sort of focal point of the structure. But the whole thing has been simplified. And if it's in the sunlight, it's light. If it's in the dark, it's dark. And I don't confuse the two because the moment you start confusing the two, then you lose the theme of the idea. So here's another one. Late evening light, shadows, patch of sunlight, shadows, patch of sunlight. Little buildings, fences, old fences, more telephone lines, lit side, dark side, so we can see where it's in shadow, it's clear we're in shadow. Where it's in light, it's clear we're in light. And the two do not get confused. 
And so it just creates this really simple structure and allows you to strip away any details that don't serve that structure. And here's an evening scene in Provence, beautiful light in the valley, and a big foreground where I add strips of light coming in from way over on the right-hand side to create more interest. But again, what is in light is really clear. What is in shadow is really clear. So here's one that I'm just presenting. I've painted this, and if you want to paint it, you're welcome to give it a try. And just making sure that you keep the sunlit and the shadow masses separate and not confused. It's a beautiful image. I enjoyed painting it. to that. And there's my palette for the painting. So in the sunlit areas, there'd be chrome oxide green with some use of one of these yellows or a couple of these yellows and perhaps some white. And there might be a touch of ultramarine or, or orange just to sort of modify the color. And then in the shadows, again, chrome oxide green, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, or if it's really dark, Thalo green and alizarin, and they might be modified, you know, with some ochre or some blue or some green or something just to sort of pull that around. But you can get an almost infinite variety of color just using that palette. So there's the canvas, 20 by 24 inches. I'm going to be painting it in oils, and I have a good rich tone there, which will, if it pops through in the painting, you won't really notice it because it'll just fall into the illusion. This is one color that actually didn't fall into the way, the way I was describing them before, and it's the distant trees because they're cool because of atmospheric perspective, and they don't have a warm and a cool side. They've just sort of, they're starting to simplify into just a very simple shape back there. There's a little hit of even lighter blue, which is sort of indicating a group of trees even behind this group of trees. But there you can just see I've got two shapes. And I'm painting in the sky holes, or actually, you know, around the trunks. There I'm just flicking the brush lightly to sort of soften those edges. Couple of places where I'm just putting little touches of shape into, and then you see I've just created the shape and I'm leaving it. Now this is the center of interest color. This is that field in the background. And I've just got, that's it. And then now I'm going to be putting in a green in front of that. You see sort of a darker green because it's in front of that yellow field. And that's kind of boxing in and sandwiching the contrast for the center of interest. So I've pretty much keyed the painting. Keyed meaning, you know, you can key it light, you can key it dark, you can key it sort of a more tonal painting or high intensity painting. I've sort of keyed the colors now right in that center of interest and everything will be building off that. So there you see I've got the shadow side of those trees. They've come forward enough that there's a lit side and a dark side, but they're just shapes. And I've just figured that shape out in relationship to the color underneath it, to the left of it, and so on. So I'm building up these colors in relationship, one to the next to the next. So each one comes off the last one. So this is the lit side of those same trees. It's not a big contrast. And notice how deliberate the brush marks are. I mean, I'm really trying to find that shape. And then you'll notice that I just sort of get edges. I'm paying attention to the edges against the color behind it. I want you to notice something of what I'm doing here. If I get this color in, then when I come to this shape, I'm looking at this in relationship to this color. And then when I come to this shape, I'm looking at it in relationship to this color and this color. And when I come over here, I'm looking at this shape in relationship to this shape. And if I'm getting them accurate, each one to the next, I'm just building them one off of the next all the way forward. Now this is the tree just to the right of the, what I was painting before. And you can see as I go, the number of subtle variations just using those few colors. You can see just sort of organizing the edge there against the sky. And I'm painting the, the two trees because they're quite close together. 
And so I'm painting them both. And then there's one that's coming a little forward, a little bit more yellow in it, just to differentiate it. And then now I'm going to put the shadow side of those two trees in. So you can sort of see the way I'm neutralizing the color there. And then I'm just, you know, there's the lit side. Now I'm getting in the dark side and I'm paying attention to the edges and the way they interact. I'll probably come back and actually paint something on top of that because the, the lit side has to be on top of the shadow, right? The shadow's underneath. But you can see there, I'm just making sure that they, they feel like they're in front of it. But you can see that I'm, I finished it. I'm not going to go back and work on those two trees again. So here I'm putting in a real dark um, just on that next bush. It got a little bit more intense a green and then a real dark in there. Then I wanted to put those trees, sort of background trees in there as well. But what happened is it made me realize that the color I had wasn't quite enough to differentiate them. So I just put a little bit more yellow in it just to pop that edge away from that pale blue. So now I'm, I've sort of got it. You'll see I got a couple other pieces in there in behind this, these bushes I'm doing now. I wanted just to, to show you these three bushes because I paint the lit side in, being attentive to the edge against the darks there. And then you'll see that I put the shadow side in. And I just want you to see the way, so you, you can see that those marks, those little flicks like that, they're not very big, but they're just enough to say, oh, I see this is in front of that. It just gives that sense of a, now we're closer to them, so we're seeing a few more of this shape is in front of that, and it has this much detail because of where it sits. But look at the way the shadow shapes are going in here, how I'm integrating the lit side and the dark side as I go, and then I never go back to touch it. I'm just paying attention as much as I can to the shape and making sure I'm getting that sense of form of the light coming round into the shadow, getting the form. And you can see that my brush, you know, puts down paint when I need to. And then as it comes to the edges, it's just sort of feathering it to sort of get that sense of the shape of lit and dark and both of them together. And then I fill in a few holes here, but then I think, that's it, I don't think I go back. Then I clean the whole palette off because what I'm sort of doing now is coming forward, we could almost say into the foreground. You'll see what I mean when, when you see where this color goes. But it's sort of like now I've done the midground. You see that see the different colors that I'm pulling to get this, but this now is coming a step forward, sort of now we're looking at the foreground. And look at how carefully I'm sort of making the marks against the darks to say, oh, this is now closer. I'm seeing this thing with more information. It's not busy, but it's just a little bit more information. Now, the other thing about this is I mix three colors. You see that last one I just showed you was just two, light and dark. This one now has three colors, a little closer. There's the lit side that's catching the light. Then this kind of mid-tone that's sort of the, the body of the whole thing. And then I put in a real dark underneath it because now we're getting closer. So the darks would be a little bit more apparent and put the third value in there at the bottom. So we have three values there as it's coming forward. And you can see as you come forward, there's more information. There's a little bit more detail, a little bit more intense color. And each step just comes forward like that. And then I put in that color. You can see that sort of pale green now with more yellow in it, same value same intensity. It's just a slightly different color. And there is really, using this palette, that there's just virtually an infinite number of colors that you can just modulate to sort of make sure that the temperature and the value and so on are adjusting so that we see where it sits in space. So now I've got this kind of dirt color. It's not that dramatically different, but interplaying the green and the dirt. I didn't spend much time I spent a lot of time actually on this wheat field. Um, there's really only two values, the one I'm putting in now to sort of block in the dark shapes, and then a lighter one, which is really just yellow ochre and white. But I was playing those two back and forth of sort of get to, because there's a lot of really beautiful soft edges in there. So I kind of soften all the edges 
and then have to go back in and put a few darks in there and then soften those again. But that took some back and forth to get that beautiful sense of the field, but it was all painted wet into wet right there, and then when I was done, I was done. Now I'm just finishing the foreground. You can see that I take this color and I just flick it up into those lit side of the grasses and with a couple of strokes like that and it just sort of gives a sense of clumps of grass with shadow. And I don't want a lot of busyness in the foreground so I'm just keeping the shapes pretty simple playing the you know the, the browns against the greens and keeping that all really simple. And then there is the finished painting.